Freedom's the answer. What's the question? You're listening to Ernest Hancock. Welcome back to Declare Your Independence, where we're just learning a bit of history. There's a little bit. You know, I'm doing it with you as fast as I can here. Now, I, I made a mistake. I thought that um, it was another uh, transition of power that was just a few weeks, and it was back earlier, and I can't remember who. I don't to look. But it was um, Mubarak was appointed by uh, um, Sadat like five years before, four years before. So he had been his VP for a while, so I made that mistake. But the um, what, what happened was interesting about the assassination was a fatwa, you know, which is kind of this religious ruler. You get some cleric to say, hey, this is good. You should do that. You know, so, oh, okay, we could do this because we got this, uh, you know, the Pope gave us a holy writ of. So that's kind of what was going on. So a fatwa was uh, issued approving the assassination of Sadat. Now, it was obtained from Omar Abdel Rahman, a cleric later convicted in the United States for his role in the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. Now, this is, you know, they just, they, it, 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 they're too intertwined, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it's, I just smell CIA on everything. Am I conspiratorial to have to just go, you know, wow, what the heck does a cleric talking about, you know, the uh, assassinating Sadat all of a sudden involved in the World Trade Center uh, bombing 93. And I'm sure they're connected somehow, but, uh, you know, I'd like to know what the real connection is. Is it a philosophical thing? Is it because the U.S., you know, was involved with uh, Sadat more than he thought they should be? And we're over here. So if we're over there, they're coming over here. I mean, that just, you know, plays right into what Dr. Paul's talking about all the time anyway. So now we have, you know, uh, Mubarak in there. And it's. It goes on. If you read a lot of this stuff, it just, I'll tell you what it comes down to. Man, is he intertwined with the United States? I mean, it's United States this, United States that. Because keep in mind, $60 billion over the last 30 years. I don't know. What does a guy get $60 billion put in his checking account? You know, um, uh, who, whose boy is he? Now, of course, I'm sure he spread it out to whatever the heck he was trying to do with it. But, uh, you know, he's not going to be retiring poor or his family has to worry about, you know, where they're going to get their next meal. So that's what <clears throat> maybe this last few weeks has been a delay just to see how much of his money he can get converted and done, and laundered and sent and gone. You know, that's what that's what happened uh, with uh, the Philippines. You know, what was that? Marcos, you know. Marco, you know, and uh, 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 Thelda, uh, Alina, whatever his wife's name was, with the five gazillion pairs of shoes. I know some people like that. But, you know, the this has been something that I think is going to get more international chronology, research, archiving available that we're going to be able to see what has happened and it be available to these 24 year old average Egyptians. I'm, I'm really looking forward to how this plays out because we're in uncharted territory. You know, on Freedom's Phoenix today, there was an article I, I came across. It just kind of blipped across my attention a little bit there is that over God, I was thinking, 200 films of early black and white silent movies and some early sound movies. Some of the early lost movies that we have had in the United States that were produced and so on, that had been traveling around and shown around the world and everything, were archived by the Russians. The Russians had a big, giant United States film archive that they used for a lot of different things, but they finally they turned them over to them. They said, hey, man, you want them here? You know, it's all good. Got them digitized. It's all good. Because what, what do you think they were using them for? Well, I'm sure they had some kind of antiquity you know, thing, but they're Soviet Union, man. What do they care? It's cultural. It's part of the, the transition, you know, the icons of a culture to be able to, you know, why do you think in old World War II movies, they go, you go, yeah, uh, well, uh, who's Babe Ruth? You know, you speak really good English, but do you know who Babe Ruth is? You know, what team did he play for? You know, this kind of thing. You know, this is the kind of stuff that you use a lot of the culture in movies and so on is part of the training of your spies. Well, I guess they don't need it anymore. Yeah, it's a long time ago stuff, but I'm sure it might have something to do. Because a lot of times you'll get a lot of sayings that we have now. You have no idea what they were, you know, from, you know, I, I <clears throat> recently, last couple of years, I found out, you know, I want the whole nine yards. Give me the whole nine yards. Nine yards of what? 
the heck are they talking about? Nine yards was the length of the ammunition belt that went into some fighter plane, uh, you know, like the 50 cals or something on the P-51 or or in the, I think the bombers, you know, the waste gunners or something. Have, you know, give them the whole nine yards. You know, that's where that came from. So nine yards. So these are the kind of phrases and things that you get in a lot of old movies and so on. When we watched old movies with my kids, they would understand, you know, you know things like uh, Harvey the Rabbit. You know, Jimmy Stewart had the invisible friend Harvey. You know, well, our little dog's name, they named the dog Harvey, you know, after whatever. They didn't even know why, because some other friend had a dog named Harvey, and they thought it was cool, and they liked it. But they, yeah, it was after a rabbit, a rabbit. You know, they had no idea what was going on. You got to explain that stuff to them. So this is, I, I think, the same kind of thing on a much more rapid scale, and access to information is going to be happening to the entire Arabic world. Because as this transition happens, as they have an opportunity <clears throat> for a different government, not just another face and a different name and, they got, and it's the same people in charge, but another fundamentally different government that they can do because they're bypassing the media control. That's what this whole thing was about. You knew Mubarak was going to start going when a couple of days ago, the state media started to turn on him. What are they doing? What are they setting up as? So who's the woman that's sitting at the CNN desk? Yeah, I'm, I'm English speaking CNN. I'm doing, I'm covering Egypt. I'm doing what? She was the one that worked for the state um, media, the television network there that quit. Because she knew that they were protesting out in front of the studio, and everybody knew it. Everybody was reporting it all over the internet and Al Jazeera and everything, but Egyptian state media wouldn't mention it, wouldn't talk about it, didn't exist. She goes, I quit. You know, I'm done. I'm out of here. All of a sudden, she's a big hero now. Well, who do you think is going to be, you know, front page and out in front and doing whatever, you know? Of course she is. Was that plant? Or at least going to be taken advantage of, even if she wasn't under control. Heck, she worked for state media. You know how how much you you need is evidence. I mean, come on. So here you have like V for Vendetta. You know, and what is it? The Natalie Portman character goes, "Yeah, she's lying." I know she blinks a lot when she knows uh, she's given a story that she knows is not true. Did she give stories that she knew was not true? Was it time for her to represent something else? So this is, I, I do not trust what has happened, even if it was, you know, with all the greatest intentions of the people, because who's in charge now? The military. They have disbanded the entire cabinet. They've done away with the part. They just start, you know, we're starting over with the military in control. Yay. So how are they going to govern? Should they even govern? The people are going to want something. They don't even really know what. You know, that's why I want to be encouraging, you know, like the one thing, whatever you come out of this entire thing, you come out with, you get to rule you. If you got somebody, you just traded <clears throat> one scumbag ruler for another scumbag ruler, you know, it's controlled by the same scumbags, you know, what's the difference? And they're going to give you a, a little bit more bread? Yay? I mean, how, seriously? This will just keep repeating over and over and over. And if you look over the last couple of hundred of years... You know, they go pretty long periods of time. They go, you know, anywhere from, you know, five to 30 years. So this is not, you know, new. So my concern is, is that they have a, they're, a, a change in the government that's not really a change. It's the same Western culture that's ruling them. I don't have a problem with Western uh, civilizations dealing with the individuals or as, am I allowed as an individual to deal with an individual in Cairo? How many things I got to go through? Oh, my goodness. If I sell something, a T-shirt, a DVD, what if I put something up for sale? How many forms do I have to fill out? Who do I have to go through? What if I want to buy something from Egypt? I get these poor people there that have lots of time on their hands, some creativity, and uh, all of a sudden they're going to be vogue. We're, we're, we're helping the people in Egypt. It's a buy Egyptian, you know, Internet, whatever the heck. And then we start doing it. Are we allowed to? No. It's going to be controlled by the Western powers. That is the battle that I want to help with. A concept of how to easily recognize who the bad guys are. They won't 
leave you alone. Pick your own government to govern yourself. That's where we can have an impact. And just and all these links and so on, you know, I, I probably did a poor job of, you know, trying to give you just the highlights of this. But you go to the day's archive on Freedom's Phoenix for the radio show, and Sierra's put up all these links so you can kind of get a history. But the history is this. The British Empire, Western culture, have been running these guys' lives for a long, long time, and they know it. And I don't think they're going to put up with it anymore. We shouldn't either. We'll talk to you Monday. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the information that detail the real news between the lines of propaganda about government policies and the true relationship we all have with coercive governments. Learn the true condition of our economy, innovations and technological breakthroughs in energy, health, computer science, and space travel. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media, the media that is so last century. Corporate media has evolved into nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but we now have a fantastic alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com provides constant news updates on the issues that affect our lives in the most important ways. Our liberty and our property are under constant attack, and FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda while encouraging the participation of our readers. Join us at FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's Freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com, where the revolution between the ears has already matured.